Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. We are going to have a absolutely massive show today focusing on WAL 406 and what's going to happen with all the predictions. But first of all, John Brzezink, how are you, sir? Pretty good, Ryan. How are you, you doing? Very well, very well. How's your week been? Ah, I spent my week in Utah visiting my grandson and my two girls. Uh, so it was a little cooler than I'm, I'm used to, but it was nice. Oh, very good. Did the, did the kids wear you out? Um, yeah, he's a handful, but uh, yeah, no, I, I took it easy. He still he still hasn't learned how to walk yet, so he's just at the crawling stage. So all, uh, all's nice. good. He, he no, just turned uh, one years old. So oh, very good. Have you got him on the table yet? Have you gripped up with him? No, and actually, I didn't do any little just you know uh, finger <laughs> grips with him yet. I, I don't know if I want him to be an arm wrestler. We'll, we'll see as he gets a little older <laughs> if he wants to follow it. Oh uh, yeah, it, it, maybe, he'll, maybe, uh, maybe maybe soccer, or football, something a little bit more mainstream. I think. Yeah, a bit more opportunity in those things. Hey, but you never you never know. I'm wrestling might right. be something big one day. Oh, good. But anyway, John, it's been a, a big week naturally coming up to the WAL 406. So we're going to be doing a 406 sp uh, special today. Um, we've got heaps of matches to talk about. Um, but before, before we dive in, I thought we'd kick it off with the Ask John segment, which is um, we've had a good question come in from uh, Brad Middleton on YouTube over the week. And he asked the question, um, would you say that hand strength is the foundation or the most important thing in arm wrestling? Oh, well, uh, that's just, yeah, common knowledge. That's obvious. Yeah, the answer is for sure, yes. I mean, that's what separates us from... Uh you know, the weightlifters is that hand size and strength, and uh, you typically won't see a great arm wrestler unless he's got a very well-developed hand and forearm. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's definitely key. I mean, you get the leverage advantage, that key position. Um, it makes makes life so much easier on the arm wrestling table. Yeah, uh, I'd love to I'd love to know when you reflect back on your sort of career and and how you won your matches. Did you do you feel you you won most of your matches because of your hand, or or, how, or, or was your arm instrumental as well um no the arm took time I, yeah, from early stages i knew that i had uh, a, a good hit a good strong hit a good twi fast twitch muscle and a good size and strong hand so my uh, my approach in the early years was always just to hit hard and, and fast and, and beat guys that were obviously a lot stronger than i was but um yeah, yeah just that hand hitting outside just using that the pan power to hit outside with that top roll um could negate a lot of that even side pressure because it, it, it takes away so much. Yeah, and, and the uh, the top roll to press combination seemed to be a pretty um, pretty lethal combination for you w w right from the beginning. And um, yeah, yeah, occasionally, occasionally you had to use that, but not not very often. I, I think just the, you know just the explosive hit to the side and 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 back with the hand. Um, typically did the job, but some guys would would be stubborn and throw the shoulder and and you know Jerry could have dead wrist you and then and then it then I had to evolve into something a little bit more to finish those guys. But uh, yeah, 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 I could I could see that for sure. Um, but yeah, interesting question there from Brad Middleton because I I know that a lot of people, um, particularly in their early years, who uh, particularly strong guys who come to the sport um, that have strong arms already, they just want to use their arm and they keep forgetting about protecting their hand and all that leverage and uh, mm -hmm. i think it's a com common mistake that people make mm -hmm. yeah no I, and a lot of the weightlifters should have strong hands but it's just a different type of strength it's not that cupping strength and um and that pronation and uh and that elbow connection i mean you, you know most arm wrestlers will tell you that they go through that two three year period of developing that inner golfer's elbow that connection on the inner elbow um and yeah. it's you know, that, that has to be very very uh, stable and strong before you can actually really put a lot of a lot of pressure on your hand and wrist to the side like uh, arm wrestling requires. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, thank you, Brad Middleton, for that question. Um, <laughs> make sure you guys send your questions in in the comments in these YouTube videos. But John, let's 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 head on now to the the, the topic of this this whole show, being the WAL four hundred six prediction special. We have an absolutely enormous card on four hundred six. I don't know how many hours it's going to take to watch this thing. Um, right. But it's going to be a big, it's going to be a big card. So um, let's let's kick our prediction off with the lightweight battle royal that's going to be happening. So the battle royal um, for everyone watching, it's a it's a four man battle royal where essentially um, Jeff Hale is going to be taking on Max Torben in the first round. Tom Holland is going to be taking on Jamie Sheldon. And the winners are going to move through. So it is an it's an eliminator, a uh, four man eliminator essentially. Um, so first match, 
Jeff Hale versus Max Torben, John. How do you see that one going? Well, um, Jeff is, uh, you know, probably the strongest arm in that division, in my opinion. Um, you know, because of his size, um, his arm yeah. length, he, he has difficult uh, a difficult time with the top rollers. Uh, so, yeah, and I, you know, I don't really know a whole hell of a lot. In fact, I don't know anything about Max Tobin other than his announcing <laughs> ability. So, uh, I, well, uh, well, Max, but, Max just um, beat Cobra Rhodes. That's that's what he's done so far this year. In, in the okay. WWE. And so I, I he, haven't seen that. I haven't seen that match. I'm assuming he's a top roller the way he the way he, he looks, is, yeah. the way he's built. Okay, so um, yeah. then it's going to basically come become down to you know can he top roll Jeff's hand and can Jeff you know get him in the straps, stand him up, keep his knuckles high, and protect his hand from being a top rolled. If yeah. he can do that, then Max probably is going to have to go towards him a little bit and try to you know get a hook in to get a hold of the uh, yeah. you know the, the arm if if. If Jeff posts properly, I mean, so yeah, I, I feel like um, Jeff for me is the favorite on this match too. I think that uh, he's warm, he's, he's warming up to the WAL. He's he, he he lost that first match uh, against Sam Harris, but then he looked great against Jamie Sheldon and was much better in these starts. And I think he's right. going to be just building up that momentum. And I think he's going to go straight through Max Torben. I think he'll he'll put it into a hook and and get the job done before Max can really get into the into the battle. So. For me, definitely Jeff Hale there. Um, yeah. Next match, you don't think, we, sorry, you don't think he's going to require the strap at all? You don't well, think it's going to go I the strap? Think, I think it will be in the strap. Yeah, I think he'll slip yeah, the strap. So too. He'll do it in the strap. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Max will probably uh, you know pull hard enough away that it, it, Jeff shouldn't try to chase him. Just to, you know, just to yeah. stand tall and keep his hand, hand high and yeah. let it go That's to the straps. Right. right. One hundred percent. Next match, John, we got Tom Holland from the UK up against uh, USA's Jamie, Jamie. Sheldon. Yeah, yeah, I think Jamie's. I think Jamie's going to bounce back. I mean, I think he's probably the better top roller. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. And a few of his buddies were bragging about how good he was in a in a hook, but he didn't. Uh, he wasn't able to prove it against Jeff. But um, yeah, that, that was that was a tough tall order. Yeah, th this one for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna I have to side with Tom Holland. Um, I've seen Tom Holland pull. I feel like if Tom Holland can set the hook, which uh, Tom Holland's last match was against. Um, uh, Luke Kent and Luke Kent won three one, but uh, in pretty pretty good fashion. But I, I, Luke Kent, what what Luke Kent has that Jamie Sheldon doesn't have is is that is that little bit extra speed off the go. And I, I feel like Tom is going to get this hook set. And I think if it goes in, he's got that Devin Larratt style anaconda squeeze right. the life out of your style hook. And I don't know that Jamie is going to be able to get a finish. But right. Well, if, if he's if he's going to telegraph that, if that's his only move and that's his approach, then I can imagine Jamie could just just purely just try to run away and hard hit to the side, and yeah. I would I would think that he would be able to accomplish the top roll. And that's we'll and see. that's how that's how Luke got the, the got the got the victory over Tom as well. But yeah, it should be an interesting match. And either way, um, who would you say is your favorite for the overall in that one? Out of those four guys, who would you expect to um, be the shortest odds to win the whole thing? Well, I think Jeff will come out on top with this uh, this group of four. I, it, you know, it, well, obviously, it, it it all depends on how the matches go. I mean, when you're you're talking four to two, um, yeah, I mean, it just the first round is a killer. I mean, if you can survive the first round easily, one way or the other, uh, you're going to be in a lot better position. So that's going to be the key. Yeah, I think I think yeah, you bang on there. I think Jeff will get through cleaner than than either Tom or Jamie will. So yeah, I'm with you, Jeff Hale for the win in the lightweight battle royal. Right. Uh, next, next one we got is the middleweight battle royal. Um, we got um, Mike Celiaris against Nicholas Nanistad. That is a contrast of height there, massively. Uh, I think Mike Celiaris is like five eleven, and Nicholas Nanistad like six foot six, almost six seven. And then right. we got Quinlan, Quinlan Mendes in against Frode Hoagland. Again, a battle royal, so an eliminator here. Um, right. Mike well, against I think Nicholas. Nick, wow. I think I think Nicholas will give Mike a lot of trouble. I think uh, you know Mike Mike relies on his uh, hand size and that kind yeah. of corporate style top roll. And you know Nicholas, uh, super tall. I, you know he's going to have a real difficult time. Uh, I think Mike's going to almost have to here again, kind of lunge yeah. a little bit for the hook before he gets the comp uh, top roll accomplished. If he tries to top roll right off a straight risk, go. I think uh, I think he's going to be in trouble. He's not going to have the height to be able to pull it off. Yeah, I, I I don't know. Um, I don't know that. Yeah, I, I just can't see Mike Celiaris 
doing what he normally does against someone with the leverage of Nicholas Nanistad. He's um, right. I've, yeah. In well, well, Nick, well, for those taller for those taller guys, you hack, actually have to get him down a little bit of an angle. So it requires mm. a, a, you know quick temporary hook and then a roll. So and, and a lot of guys don't want to want to risk that. Yeah. <laughs> But it's going to be a fascinating one for that one. And then we've got Quinlan Mendes versus Frode Hoagland. Um, yeah, cool. Frode Hoagland from Norway, Quinlan Mendes, U- USA. That, that, that's going to go, that, I think that's going to be a war. That's so typical of Frode Hoagland. But um, how do you see it okay. out? Well, Quinlan, I mean, he impressed me a couple of years ago when he pulled Todd Hutchins. Um, very explosive guy, super speedy. Uh, but yeah. his hand and wrist and his technique has kind of been lacking the last few matches that I've watched him. Um, is it Frodo? Frodo? Fro- I want to say Fro- Frodo, but it's Frodo, right? Yeah, yeah, Frodo. <laughs> look, look, cr- look, crazy. <laughs> He's crazy impressive. Um, uh, crazy hand strength, crazy confidence, um, crazy side hit. So I, I expect him to be able to control uh, Quinlan. Yeah, I, I think so too. Frode, Frode for me has to be the favorite. And to be honest, I think Niklas Nanestad the favorite the first. So I'm expecting a, a battle between Sweden's and Niklas Nanestad and always Frode Hogland in the final. And it, interestingly, they've had many, many battles. Those guys have faced in arm wars like four oh, okay. or five times. So they know All each right. other back to front. So, uh, so, I, so I'm not familiar. Who's, who's normally the, uh, the winner? Who's the, uh, on, who, on, who comes on the right top? hand? On right hand, Frode Hogland. On left hand, Nicholas Nanestad. So I think Frode okay. is the favorite. But if right. Quinlan Mendes, if Quinlan Mendes gives him a war, uh, and right. Nicholas gets it'll, gets through kind of clean, yeah, it'll change everything for sure. Yeah, oh, that's going to be key. Is, is surviving the first round. Awesome. All right. Well, let's go on with another segment, John. Uh, this time we've got play of the day. Uh, play of the day, of course, is brought to you by Lethal Arms Apparel. So go and check them out, lethalarmsapparel.com. But um, John, play of the day this week. Uh, there was an awesome tournament that just happened in Sweden. The, I think I'll pronounce it hopefully correctly. The the Brynäs Open Challenge, and um, there were some tremendous matches in there. And I think the highlight, the the match that took play of the day, was a match between Magnus Lundgren and Alexander Johnson. Did you get a chance to see that match? I did see it. And yeah. Um, yeah, no, uh, well, c- uh, contrasting styles for sure. Uh, one had the hand and uh, leverage advantage. The other guy was trying to pull a Todd Hutchins and uh, just pure side mm-hmm. pressure. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he almost pulled it off. I mean, uh, so, but uh, uh, the kid on the right, I don't know who that is, but he stayed Ale- composed. That was Alex- and, Alexander. Okay, yeah, he stayed composed and, um, you know, got the job done. That back pressure uh, negates the side pressure most of the time. Yeah, I thought it was one of the best matches um, of that of 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 kind of the the month that I've seen. Actually, I really enjoyed seeing the, these two guys out of Sweden. And um, Sweden arm wrestling has always been such a, a tremendous ca- high caliber arm wrestling, and, and they have such depth. and And it goes to show that these these two names that weren't particularly known on the world world stage, but you watch the way they move and their physicality, they 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 both look legit, and you think, wow, these guys are awesome. So. Epic match, and that, that match there definitely gets the play of the day. Um, so back to the WAL 406 prediction special. Um, the, another component of this card is the Women's Championship. Now, the Women's Championship, we haven't seen um, a, a couple of these, or we haven't seen three of these girls yet uh, for this season, but they have featured at other times at different years. We've got Fia Rysek from Sweden up against Dimitrina Petrova from Russia. And then we've got the USA's Michelle Dugan up against Sweden's Victoria Carlson. Again, um, in an uh, an eliminator there. So Fia against Dimitrina, Michelle against Victoria. Um, For me, Fia, she's got to be the favorite. How do you see this one? Yeah, no, super, super impressive, super confident, super strong hand. uh, Mm -hmm. Nice, nice side pressure top roll. Uh, Don't see much else from her. Haven't seen her really pull on a hook. Haven't seen her adapt to having to, to post top roll. Uh, and here again, I don't know the girl that she's pulling. She's from Bulgaria, Petrova. Um, I, I actually, I actually tried to look up some matches on uh, the internet this afternoon just to get an idea. Uh, on her profile picture at the uh, with the WAL, she's got yep. a, obviously a massive hand and a massive wide wrist with some big old tendons sticking yeah. out. So um, yeah. I'm assuming that yeah. she's going to be very strong in the hand and, and wrist. So we'll see if... Uh, I, I spoke uh, to, to Neil Pickup about Dimitrina and um, apparently she is an absolute beast in the hook. So um, okay. if she can if she can force the hook on Fia, that it'll be a war, absolute war. But 
I, I, I still have to go with Fia. She's such a well-rounded arm wrestler with, like you said, a huge hit and side pressure. And I, I, I feel like she'll get the job done over someone of Dimitrina's caliber. Um, even, even though she's as good as she is, I think that Fia is, she's a, she's a multiple WAF world champion. She's a WAL champion. She's, I think, very much the favorite for this, this, right, this card. Right. But yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. Um, then we got Michelle Dugan against uh, Sweden's Victoria Carlson. How do you see that one going? Victoria Carlson. Well, I just saw some videos of her this afternoon, and um, she's a little shorter stature. Uh, almost kind of reminded me of uh, here again uh, Todd Hutchins' style of pulling. Uh, she, because yep. of her small size, she occasionally gets out of position with her hand and wrist. Not that her hand and wrist aren't strong, but they get uh, compromised because of the taller pullers. Uh, but she still fights through, and she's got you know, what looks to be crazy side pressure. So um, Michelle Dugan, obviously a bigger woman, better size, maybe better top roll. So I would expect that she would get the top roll. Uh, whether or not she has the side pressure to finish, that's, that'll be the big question. Yeah, yeah, well, there you go. That, that, that sounds like a, a con the contrasting styles are going to be a, a tremendous matchup. So, um, and, and in typical WAL style, it's, it should be a war. So... I don't know my gut feel says Michelle Dugan again. I agree, just because of the size difference, and I feel like that outside pressure and the back pressure that Michelle Dugan's going to bring will get the job done. But, um, but I'd love to see a war. Nothing better than a war where the the person that's kind of underneath in that, like you said, Todd Hutchins sort of position, ends up getting on the bicep and dragging through. It's always entertaining. So right, it'll be, it'll be a close one. But then whoever moves through to the final, in my head, I just can't see them beating Fear. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll choose the same. Yeah, for sure. All right, so Fia looks like the fan favorite there. All right, guys, we are going to go on with the next segment now, which is uh, the breakdown. Now, the breakdown is brought to you by Arm Wrestling TV. Go and check them out. They're one of the best arm wrestling channels on YouTube, Arm Wrestling TV. Um, and this, this week, we are going to be analyzing the very, very controversial match between Devin Larratt and Matt Mask from the WAL 405. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Breakdown. In this episode, we have two Canadian all-time greats on the left of screen, Matt Mask, up against Devin Larratt on the right of screen, and it is at the WAL 405 Championship. You see here both athletes getting ready for the go. And the early start there from Devin Larratt, Matt Mask missing the jump, but waiting to go on the attack. And there it is, Matt Mask now looking to, to return onto the offense. But Devin Larratt doing what he does best and taking control of the hand and putting that situation where Matt Mask looking to now pin himself, Devin Larratt having none of it. And very interesting, you can see the frustration there from Matt Mask. Let's look at that one again. As Devin Larratt takes the hand control away from Matt Mask, it neutralizes his ability to go on the offense with the typical low hand top roll hit. Matt Mask, sensing that he's lost access to that, gets that frustration, tries to pit himself. Devin Larratt having none of it, and the three elbow fouls conceded from Matt Mask for a 1 0 victory to Devin Larratt. All right, into round two, we will go. You see round two here about to get away and Matt Mask with a much better start here. Even amounts of hand control. Matt Mask getting slightly over at the edge there onto the bicep of Devin Larratt. And the side pressure there gets the victory. Matt Mask very excited. Let's have a look at the replay in slow motion. Matt Mask off the start. The hand control that he didn't get in round one, he's able to establish it here. No cup is achieved by Devin Larratt, and therefore the side pressure of Matt Mask is able to get onto the bicep of Devin Larratt. As Matt Mask continues to add that, he adds a big drive there, getting Devin Larratt down to a pin for a one-all draw. You can see the frustration spilling over now. Both athletes very, very fired up for this match. Into round three. Now, into the straps again. Matt Mask with a very good start. Very similar to round two. He has the hand back from Devin Larratt. No cup has been achieved. He's looking for a pin, but this time Devin Larratt goes into the king's move. Watch Matt Mask now as he tries to surge for the pad. He's looking at the referee, hoping to get a pin called, but nothing yet. Devin Larratt sinking deeper into this king's move. Watch as Matt Mask will stand up and probably look for a press here to try to get some power onto the bicep of Devin Larratt. As he comes forward, there it is. Devin Larratt way off the back of the pad for a big, big elbow foul. Very unlucky there. If we have a look at that replay, you'll see Matt Mask had the hand control. He had what he needed to get the pin done, but Devin Larratt 
takes an enormous elbow foul in the King's move. Very unfortunate, in most circumstances could have been called for a victory for Matt Mask, but in this circumstance, Devin Larratt gets away with one with a big foul and pinning Matt Mask whilst on a foul. You can see here, as Matt Mask comes forward, Devin Larratt clearly slides off the back and gets the running foul restart. Very, very fortunate. All right, restarting this round three. You can see here Matt Mask looking for control. Devin Larratt unable to get the cup again, but dropping into a King's move. This time, will he stay on the pad? I think he really starts to go on the offense. He's now chipping away at Matt Mask, trying to get onto the bicep of Matt Mask. As that is happening, Devin Larratt now starting to win some hand control. This is gonna allow him to get more cup set and the more he gets his cup set, the more he can get onto the bicep. You can see Matt Mask has now come forward and again pins himself. Matt Mask, look at the replay of this. As Devin Larratt gets control, Matt Mask tries to find some power in a position where he can conserve. But once he is here, Devin Larratt refusing to pin him, knowing that he's got all the leverage to win and Matt Mask can't do a thing. Matt Mask senses it once again and pins himself for a 2-1 victory there to Devin Larratt. All right, into the fourth now. Devin Larratt on the left of the screen. Off the start there, Devin Larratt maintains the flat hand position and very rare sight here, we've got Devin Larratt actually on the offense. Devin Larratt trying to chip through the hand of Matt Mask to get to the bicep. Matt Mask has the superior hand strength overall, but Devin Larratt with that chipping away offense has been able to expose that. You can see him neutralizing the ability for Matt to actually go on the offense with his own hits. Devin Larratt now staring down his opponent. Matt Mask coming forward, looking for some position where he can maintain some degree of power and, and put up a defense, but Devin Larratt in such a tight position now, talking to Matt Mask, and Matt Mask pins himself once again. There it is, 3-1, but look at the replay. You can see Devin Larratt, very interestingly, neutralizing Matt's hit with his own hit. That was the moment right there where Devin Larratt knew the match was over. Matt Mars knew it as well. He comes forward looking for some degree of option, but Devin Larratt, the match is already done. Devin Larratt has every bit of leverage he needs to finish the match. He's got Matt in an absolute lead, and he's refusing to pin him. He is gonna get pinned by himself one more time. So three pins for Devin Larratt there with Matt Mars pinning himself. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the breakdown. Alrighty, John. So our next 406 prediction, uh, we're going to focus on one of the uh, some of the feature super matches that are happening. Um, one of the feature super matches we've got is Sam Harris against Luke Kint. Um, both of these guys uh, have taken one win and zero losses in the WAL this season. Sam Harris, of course, beat Jeff Hale, and Luke Kint, of course, beat Tom Holland. Um, how do you see this one going? Oh, I can't. I can't bet against against Sam. Um... Both great top rollers, uh, so uh, but I just have a feeling that Sam's just going to be a little bit stronger in that in that department than Luke's yeah. going to be. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. Sam, um, Sam's just seems like he's really lifted over the last couple of years. He's emerged as one of the dominant one six fivers. I think the only thing that could for me edge it towards Luke is uh, if they're allowing Luke to be a little bit heavier because when we saw Luke. Last time against um, Tom Holland, I think he was closer to 180 pounds. So uh, if Sam Harris is 165 and Luke is 180, I think we could it could go either way. But if they're both sitting at 165, I'm with Sam Harris for sure. Right, right. Well, and Sam, and Sam can't let down like he did uh, in his previous match. <laughs> I mean, if he, if he wins the first one um, like he did against uh, Jeff, I mean, don't... Don't yeah. uh, don't don't let down, and because uh, because Luke does have a um, the capability of coming back uh, from a losing losing rounds. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely, and, and like you said, uh, you you make a mistake like that in a super match format, it can backfire tremendously. Where you're in control, and then all of a sudden your your arms got is filled with lactic acid, and and you can't get the job done. So right, yeah. Sam Harris, yeah, no showboating. But Luke Kent, he's the same. He'd, he'd be someone that once he's got control, he, he likes to rub it in. So it, uh, it could be an absolute war. It could be a 3-2, but right. uh, it'll be a cracker. Yeah, I don't, I, don't see this one, I don't see this one going inside. It's going to stay outside, and it's going to go to the yeah. straps, and it's going to be whoever, whoever dominates the hand yeah. for sure. Absolutely. John, the next match we've got um, a very big match. Uh, Todd Hutchins up against Marcio Barboza. Um, how do you see this one? This is a fascinating one for me. 
This is a really bad match for uh, Todd Hutchins. Um, I think the last, <laughs> I, I think the last time these guys pulled, well, the last one I remember distinctly was the uh, UAL. It's, I don't know how many years ago it's been. It's probably been, yeah. 10 years ago maybe, yep. but I, I see it happening exactly the same way. Marcio's got that I posting top I haven't top seen that match. He's got it. How he's did got that match play out? Uh, typical Todd Hutchins fashion, uh, tried to pull underneath, uh, side pressure, Marcio had position on his hand, posted, um, got him stretched out, but uh, Todd just would not give up. And, I, and yep. to be honest, I really don't know what the outcome was. I, I have a feeling Todd won it. Um, if my memory serves me correctly, but there was a lot of fouls, a lot of restarts, uh, a lot of elbows, and um, okay. I, 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 I see it going exactly the same way. Unless, unless Todd Hutchins has learned some stuff and, and has been practicing, um, and I'm, I'm going to say top roll. He doesn't really necessarily have to top roll or top roll uh, with Marcio, but just just yep. keep you know don't go underneath. Don't don't don't. <laughs> Um, this, panic and this, go sideways and let your hand face the ceiling. Right. I mean, keep keep your hand at least perpendicular to the table and um, maybe try to post a little bit and, and protect that hand because the side pressure will come a lot easier if he does that. But um, yeah, and uh, uh, sorry, I guess Mar Marcio Barbosa he's such a compact, um, uh, just ball of muscle and and. And he's got that much power that yeah, if, you, if you're crumbling under under his hand, that it's a hard path to get through that bicep and that, is, that, that power. It's nearly impossible unless you're Jerry Cataret or maybe Todd Hutchins. I mean, there, very few people yeah. could pull that yeah. off. Uh, yeah. And very interestingly, um, comments from Todd Hutchings in recent times. If we wind back to I think it was WAL four or two where where Marcio was uh, due to go up against Matt Mask, there were plenty of comments from Todd in the lead up to that from a training um, run that they had together where he made the comments that Marcio felt the strongest he has ever felt. He's ever so, felt. Yeah, so that, that like, yeah. We, well, we don't know the situation completely. We don't know if they were both fresh and Marcio showed up late, um, that type of stuff. I, I know in Todd's brain, he doesn't think that matters, but even Todd Hutchins yeah. gets wore out a little bit, so... Uh, yeah. I would expect if it goes, if it went wrist to wrist, I would expect Todd Hutchins would, would win. I, I think he's just stronger yeah. and has better endurance than Marcio. Uh, but yeah. Mar Marcio is going to keep it, keep him flat handed for sure, at least. Um, yeah. But, but. yeah. I, I, I personally find it very difficult to, to predict this one. I, I feel like Marcio, like Marcio will take control of the center of the table in the first round and, and maybe get a pin, but Todd just doesn't die. And I don't know. I think like, I feel like they'll gas pretty evenly. Normally, I would say Todd Hutchings would outlast anyone, but I feel like the match is going to stop two inches away from Marcio pinning. Right. And that's where that's right. where the war is going to happen. So right. I think, it's, yeah, it's a pretty well, even bleed. No, I, I don't know which way to go. Well, it's going to be an even bleed just because Marcio is going to have the leverage advantage. I think Marcio is going to get yeah. the position and Todd's going to have to fight from a very awkward spot. Uh, mm. And But... Yeah, no, Todd still is a beast, even even with his hand opened up like that, wide open. Yeah, so for, for me, this one's a toss of a coin, but uh, like if I if I ask my my gut what which way to go, it's uh, I, I'm I'm going Marcio. Come on, Marcio, uh, don't, uh, don't let me down. <laughs> and, I, and I'm going to go with Todd Hutchins just because I, right, I know I know, I know I know the kind of guts he's got and the kind of endurance he's got, and I don't think uh, he might lose even two, but uh, he'll he'll fight back and, and figure it out. Yeah. Awesome stuff. All right. Well, the next match, John, is another um, enormous match in this feature super match. It's um, Matt Mask from Canada up against USA's Jerry Cataret. Two absolutely polar opposite contrasting styles. Um, how do you see this one? I think it's a horrible mat, uh, match for Matt um, unless he does something that he's not typically used to doing. Uh, he's he's got he's to gotta stand tall and watch the first match that Devin had with... Uh, with Jerry and, and, and almost kind of push and commit uh, so Jerry doesn't get that angle. If, if Matt tries to, you know, top roll real hard and doesn't cover it up with a shoulder roll uh, and Jerry's yep. able to get that, get, get a little bit of an angle, a little bit of a press in there, it's, it's going to be Jerry. And I, I don't know, if, I, yeah. I don't think Matt's ever felt anything like uh, Jerry's going to, you know, going to show yeah. at the table. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. If Matt hits his standard angle, Jerry's going to, monster him i think jerry's not going to be intimidated by that hit and right. he's going to dump it get his shoulder behind and just just right. straight through and yeah. i it's, think i think 
It's very intimidating. I mean, because most arm wrestlers think once they got the hand like that so far out of position that that's the easy approach to it, especially when you're going against someone as big and strong as Jerry Cataret. Um, he's very intimidating to, to try to drive into the direction that he's driving. But um, mm. watch some of his matches. Uh, you know, uh, uh, like Travis Badgen, I mean, much yes. easier time yeah. when he pushes yeah. into him. But Devin Lorette, I mean, yeah. I, the list goes on that, and on. Um, even, that even was the mine, one I was thinking of, too. Even mine, way back when, when we pulled at uh, Mohegan Sun, I mean, uh, I've had some just horrible, horrible experiences with Jerry Cataret. And, and, th <laughs> and thinking I've got this thing won, there's no way this guy's going to be able to pull through this. I'm, I'm stood up and yep. got all the leverage. And it's, I mean, you know, five minutes later, you're yeah. going, what the crap? So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it'll be it'll be a good oh, yeah. it'll be a good experience for Matt, but um, I gotta go with Jerry. <laughs> yeah, me too. I think Jerry for sure. I don't know that Matt's gonna be brave enough, as you said, to to commit to a press or a shoulder roll from the early parts of the match, and I think that'll be his undoing. But he'll learn a lot from it. He'll learn the angle and go, okay, yep, I have to. But you mm -hmm. never know. He might surprise us. But I'm I agree. I'm mean, very much in the Jerry Catteret corner on this mm -hmm. match. Yeah. Alrighty, uh, so the next thing, guys, we've got coming up is Table Talk with John Brzezank. Uh, John, what are, we, what are we talking about in Table Talk today? Oh, I had a hard time thinking about what to talk about, uh, but I'm going to talk about just hand position, uh, different types of top rolls. Uh, here again, I, I touched on it a little bit with the straps, uh, but I want to discuss the high top roll versus a low Cobra style top roll, um, and maybe a little bit position with even attempting a, an occasional hook with a top roll. Awesome. Awesome, let's do it. All right, uh, the question was asked about uh, hand position. When is it uh, correct to do a posting style top roll versus a cobra style top roll versus uh, attempting a hook? Uh, so I wanted to go over some positions, some top roll positions basically with the hand uh, first. Uh, the posting style top roll, uh, knuckles high, front of the arm, um, leaning back on the tricep, uh, typically works well for guys with smaller hands. Uh, that and our smaller guys, smaller, shorter arms aren't going to have the advantage to basically drop their wrist down and go to the side and take their opponent out of position. So the best way for them to protect their hand and wrist is to keep their knuckles high. This forces the taller guy to uh, attempt a little bit of a hook before they can roll on the fingers because the, the strong lap pull Cobra style top roller is basically going to run underneath the posting style top roller's hand if he um, accomplishes this well with good back pressure. So the taller guy typically will do the thumb rolling uh, Cobra style top roll. Um, they, they have that advantage just because of their sheer size, their, their arm length. Uh, hooking, different ways to hook obviously, um, but mainly you want to have your wrist on top of your opponent's hand. You want their hand to be up in the air. So a lot of times it's, it's advantageous to grab somebody actually lower on the hand and wrist if you think they're going to manipulate your hand to the upward position. It's way better in a hook to have your hand this direction in a hook, low on the wrist, versus this direction on the hand. So. Uh, don't be afraid to grab somebody a little bit lower on the wrist to negate that great top rolling uh, um, ability of some of the taller guys. Um, hope that helps. Already back from Table Talk, and it is time to continue with the WAL 406 special um, that we've got here today. And the next match um, that we're, we're going to talk about are what they're calling the championship matches. Now, these these matches, first of all, in the middleweight division, we've got um, RVJ up against Storm Cholino, two very informed arm wrestlers. Um, this one should be a war, I reckon. Uh, how do you see it? Go, John. I'm going to let you go first on this one. How do you see it? <laughs> okay, all right. For me, for me, RVJ has a better hand out of straps. I think that he will look to control Storm and not let Storm go to the straps. I think that RVJ loves to just let people scramble and um and try to get away so i think early rounds rvj is going to have that dominance but i think as the fatigue of the match comes in storm's going to get to the straps and that's where i see it being um slightly storm's way once it's in the straps but i think i think this one is a very difficult one to predict but i think that um ultimately i see storm chilino coming through 
Really? Yeah. And a lot of my friends, in fact, I have a, I've got a, a bet with my buddy uh, Bob Braun on this particular match, and um, he's, he's pretty confident Storm's going to have the power to take care of Rob. But uh, I've, I've pulled Rob before in the past, and if he's uh, in any kind of shape like he was when I pulled him, uh, his hand is just too big and too strong to, to, yeah. to uh, deal with straight up. And I'm not sure Storm is confident enough or experienced enough to try to attempt to hook Rob and then top roll him. I don't think he's going to be able to top roll uh, Rob from a, a straight yeah. set, straight setup. It Rob's just too experienced and too big. Um, and What's I agree. It? I agree. Rob's Rob's hands so massive. Um, even if he doesn't have the power that Storm does, he's going to have a better position uh, with the, uh, yeah. the finger yeah. finger grappling, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> for for me, it always comes to mind is RVJ against Todd Hutchins, and in, in years gone by, I've always been so impressed that that he's he's been able to to make Todd panic and and outside of straps in particular he just was all over Todd when it came to hand control and 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 would hold on to thumbs not let Todd slip and and I think it's going to be the same I, I don't know where where he, he gets that but you often hear RVJ talk about he wishes the straps didn't exist in the sport of arm wrestling and mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. clearly outside of the straps he just loves to to, yeah. to dominate. Well, yeah, yeah, he's a, well. He relies on that hand size to just a hit to the sides. Um, he's not really that much of a poster. I don't see him posting that much, and that's kind of the the you know, the straps uh, you know game. You almost kind of have to have that loading back pressure to, to work the straps at the you know the optimum yeah. uh, value. Yeah. Uh, but hey, okay, let's talk about hook. RBJ Storm and a hook. I, yeah, I, think, well. I think I think Rob's stronger. <laughs> I think if it goes to a hook, if it, it ends up finding its way there, um, Rob, yep. Rob could Rob could sit, get him away from his arm, and and, and bleed him. But we'll see. I, yeah, I I, th I think I, I don't see it getting to a hook out of straps ever. I think RBJ would would take control. But in straps, I think that that Storm Cholino, um will will be more efficient in the straps. In my uh, so in my opinion, if it's a hook out of straps, RBJ all day. If it's a hook in straps, I'm going. Storm yeah. with just a little bit of well, extra like I, like, like I said, from my approach against Rob, I you know, I almost had to attempt to hook him a little bit to get a hold of that hand or get be able to get through that hand. So you almost have to yep. commit to a little bit of a hook before you can uh, you know attempt to roll on that hand. And I think that's going to be the yeah, same for true. for Storm. So if Storm does that and Rob decides to drop it and and keep it in a hook, then then they'll go from there. Yeah, for sure. Well, it looks like we've got another split vote here on this one. Um, I'm with Storm, and you're with RBJ. Is that correct? Correct. You want awesome. some? You want, you want? You want? This, you want? This you, you, you want to put some money on it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's talk about that one off air. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. Next one. Um, next championship match. This one's a little bit controversial, and controversial in the sense that. I don't, I don't agree, and I think a lot of people don't agree that this should be called a championship match. I'm, t I'm of course, talking about Devin Larratt versus Michael Todd, and the reason it's so controversial is the fact that Jerry Cataret beat Michael Todd. Hmm. Um, obviously, Devin beat Jerry, so there's this little kind of situation there. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, Michael Todd against Devin Larratt. How do you see this one going? I, I don't see anybody. I don't see how you could beat Devin Lorette when you're um, out of position, and, and Michael Todd doesn't have the capabilities to uh, quickly beat or take Devin out of position. Devin will um, have position, and you know Michael's game is the waiting game and, and the endurance game typically, and it's, I, don't, I, just, I just don't see it happening with Devin, especially when you're uh, when you're doing it so out of position. So. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be. Uh, I think Dev is going to have a little easier time with Mike than he than he did with uh, Jerry, to be honest. Yeah, look, look, I I, I have to agree. I, I I wish I I wish I thought otherwise, but I think that um, Devin Larratt is going to really really control this match. He's going to be smiling for a lot of the match. Um, I think that yeah, the one dimensional style of Michael, as brutal as that style is, mm -hmm. Devin's the man to Devin's. Devin's tall and he's strong right now, and mm -hmm. and being as tall and as strong as he is, he's I think he'll yeah dom he'll dominate that hand control and he'll just and mm -hmm. Michael Michael's pronation will eventually give up and he'll have to stand up and right. it'll be one way traffic. But 
You gotta gotta give it to Michael Todd. He's uh he's definitely upped his ante in the um psychological warfare. He's he's trying to do a Devin Larratt on Devin Larratt in that regard. So uh, yeah, have yeah. you seen any of that? I, I saw I saw a little bit of the video of when they were pulling and uh, Mike just kept yeah. smashing him and smashing him and smashing him. So I I don't, I don't know. Did Devin respond to that? Yeah, I saw Devin's response to that 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 was apparently um day two of an expo with the Devin oh. being there and, oh, well, and also four out four hours into day two. So uh, well. Can't, you can't there's no excuses in arm wrestling you lost yeah. <laughs> that's it if it was fun it's an entertaining video but anyway i i don't think that that uh any psychological warfare is going to get into the mind of, of devon i think that's his domain but anyway i think yeah yeah and, to he's, me, and, he, and he's got georgia stockwitz to uh, train with so he knows that posting style kings yeah. move very very well and I'm, i mean I, I would love to see devon you know maybe try to control uh, michael in a little different way and and, and try to maybe possibly uh, force him into a hook but I, i'm not sure that that's even yeah. even possible I would love, that how move. Good, that'd be amazing i haven't seen I've, ne- I've never i haven't seen michael todd pulling a hook um you don't, Forever, you, you'd like. almost have to really grab him low on the wrist so he's not able to, you know, to rotate like that and, and uh, yeah. do the do the king's move. To, you know, that would be fascinating. Yeah. That would be fascinating. Um, awesome. Um, All righty, so the, the next match we've got is probably the standout match. Um, it's Krasimir Kostadinov versus Dave Chafee. But before we get to the prediction, John, uh, I think we should get Krasimir Kostadinov on the line. All right, let's do it. Hello. Hey, John. Hey, hey Krazy. How are you? Hey, Krazy. Good. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Uh, we got we got the sound all sorted out. Well, welcome, welcome. It's a pleasure for me. Yeah. Well, let's let's kick it off uh, straight away. Krazy, um, Konstantinov. Obviously, you have a massive match coming up in just a couple of weeks' time um, in WAL 406. Um, how are you feeling coming into this match with Dave Chafee? Well, I feel great. I think that it's a great opportunity for me to improve myself in front of everybody. Because last year was not so good for me. And uh, I hope this year to show everybody that I am one of the best footballers in the world. Right. How, how's your shape? Are you, are you injury free? What, what happened last year? Did you have an injury? Or? Yeah, actually last year at the Nationals I got injured with Sasha Andreev. And um, after that, maybe about five, six months, I was not able to go to the site so good. Okay. I was able to pull, but uh, not 100%. Right. Was it an elbow or upper arm? Uh, 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 I'm not sure. It was uh, somewhere between the chest and the back uh, shoulder. Gotcha. Is that is that the first injury you've had? You've been pretty injury free throughout your career, haven't you? Yeah, actually, yes. With my right, this is my first injury. Gotcha. With left, uh, I had a lot of injuries, but with right, uh, this is the first time. Right. Well, you're getting older. <laughs> it's it's, it's yeah. gonna happen. It's gonna happen. So, so do you feel like you're in the best shape of your life right now, or? But now, yes, I think so because um, a very good fr- friend of mine who is a very strong cooler, Dan Tonev. Right. Last year he was third in the world, so it's right. He lives uh, in my house now, and for about six, seven months we just train, and oh. I think that I'm in my best shape now. Right. You look really good. You, you look really good against Devin. I don't. I, I don't know the situation there when you guys, you guys got together, but uh, you look like you. Uh, the video that I saw, you look like you uh, handled him pretty well. I mean, I don't know. How did you feel against? <laughs> how did you feel against Devin? <laughs> I don't want to say anything because it's practice, but uh, right. no, Chief, you will understand if I am good enough. <laughs> right, 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 right. Crazy, what are you weighing at the moment? Well, 102 kilos. 102. Oh. Okay, so not super heavy. You're, 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 you're maintaining that 220 pound class. My weight is the same for, for about 7, 8 years already. Yeah. So, Krazy, D- Dave Chafee is probably going to be weighing closer to 300 pounds for this um, event, I would imagine. Typical Dave Chafee, sort of high 290, maybe. Um, how, are you confident that you can get that hook set? Uh, we'll see. I don't want to talk too much, but uh, what I can say is that the kilograms, uh, I don't think that they help so much. If they are in the arms, yes, but if they are in the... Uh, <laughs> 
legs and uh, stomach, <laughs> they don't help so much. Yeah. Right. Like I said, I'd actually love to ask you a, a little bit about your 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 hand style of training. Um, given that given that you're you're definitely recognised as one of the best, if not the best, hookers on the planet. Um, do, do do you have a, a, a focus on just the hand strength in, uh, for the hooker? Well, what I can say that uh, in the past I was training my wrists and fingers with all kinds of exercises, specific, two, three times per day. And my hand still was not that good. And when I started just to pull almost every day on the table, I felt a lot of improvement in my hands. Yeah, I was going to ask what your approach was for training. Is that your philosophy now is to basically 90% on the table versus the, the weights that you used to do? Uh, from 2011, I don't lift weights anymore. Ah, seven, wow. Seven years. Wow. I just pull almost every day on the table, sometimes two, three times per day. Okay. Wow. So your endurance level your endurance level should be really good. I mean, I don't know as, as far as peak strength, is, you know, <laughs> breaking yourself down like that. <laughs> Yeah, that, that that's that's truly amazing, and that 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 reflects John. What I know you you've said many times that table time is the number one form of training. Um, right. So I love it. That'll be good. That'll be really good. I I I, I have a feeling though, as you get older, Crazy, that you're going to have to start backing off on that once a day. <laughs> Every day is a lot of a lot of. But I guess the body adapts. I guess. So I mean, if it's working for you, great. Just my system is not to uh, pull. Um, like on, on the competition, okay. I just train. I just train every part. I train my wrist. I train my foot. Um, my opponent is usually holding with two hands or with uh, some belt. Okay. And uh, he is a lot stronger than me, and he just beats me very slowly. Right. And uh, we don't pull like on the competition. Yeah. Right. Well, well, with your uh, with your match with Devin, I'm curious to, to know your opinion on uh, the Devin uh, Dennis match coming up in November and as Lottie. What, what's your feeling on that? I, I I will I will bet on Devin because um, because of the styles. Uh -huh. Where uh, Dennis will try to curl him, I think this is this is the most um, the the most difficult way to beat Devin. Right. With the, um, the style of pulling that. Uh, Evan's arm strength will be enough to, to stop the match and then be able to work his work his back pressure on on Dennis. I think so. I think uh, so. Maybe yeah. Dennis will take one round, but I I think that Devon will be able to stop the match and beat him. Okay. Wow. Well. Because uh, to be to beat Devon, we need to be explosive. Right. But I don't think that uh, Dennis is explosive enough. So. Right. No, I believe that too. I, I I believe that the best match for probably Devin or the, the most successful guy that would be would be someone like Arson, someone that's explosive, like or even Travis Travis for that. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. I mean it requires that that explosive hit. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That, that so, is, so sorry, go John. Sorry, go John. So I was gonna say, so you so you're betting on Devin against Michael Todd, the two endurance bowlers. Uh, I think that Devin will be able to climb over right. Michael's hand and uh, just he's universal and uh, if you want to be Devon you need to be strong and fast right so uh, I know we've got this match coming up with Dave but can you see yourself having a match with Devon Larratt in the WIL in the future yes of course <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're gonna you're gonna have to get, in my opinion, the strongest arm in arm wrestling right now, uh, Dave Chafee. If if uh, if uh, you even stop the match, I'll be really impressed, uh, Crowdy. I mean, because I think I think that I think that man is the strongest arm. I mean, obviously Pushkar handled him, you know, last year, but the circumstances weren't optimum for uh, for uh, Dave. But uh, I mean, he's he's got an he's not fast, but he's got an incredibly hard unorthodox surge and if you can stop that then I think you got good chances but um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's true um, no, nobody beat the champion in the last several years in school no 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 and he, like I said he's got that he's got that weightlifters uh, unorthodox way of coming across the table he's not going to top roll you but it's going to feel really weird it's not like a natural movement for most most arm wrestlers that you face yeah. 
But, yeah, if anybody can do it, I, I, you can. I mean, you're, you're, you're probably the close second as far as upper arm strength goes. So, I mean, um, I, you know, your, your weakness has always been your hand size. And, and uh, I don't think Dave is going to, you know, I think. Yeah, I hope so. We'll see. <laughs> Crazy, I'd love to ask you what brought you to the WIL. Well, actually, new pickup called me and asked me if I'm interested to pull the other. And I just agreed. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think it is tremendous to have some uh, Eastern Europe representation uh, in the WIL because I, I, I personally feel like globally. Eastern Europe um, maintain the highest standards uh, and have the greatest depth in their, their country's arm wrestlers. So I think the more that we can see Eastern Europe in WAL, the better. So welcome. <laughs> yeah, no, it's going to be more exciting, definitely, for sure, as soon as they expand out more than just the United States. And it's it's great. I th I'm sure they are going to appreciate that you're, you're going to speak English and <laughs> you know, some of the... Uh, the, the reason why arm wrestling is developing in Europe is because there are several countries where the federation gives money to the athletes. Yeah. Okay. And because, for example, in America, for almost everybody, it's just a hobby. Right. Yeah, it's nice that it's being recognized at that level where they're getting subsidized by the government. That that really is. Mm. So, so crazy. Does the WIL, is that your plan for the foreseeable future or are, are you going to still want to pull WAF as well or what's the plan for you? Well, I don't know because right now the situation in Bulgaria with our president is still <laughs> unsure. Okay. And I don't know if I will, will be allowed to pull WAF, so yep. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. so you at least the WIL is giving you something to do with certainty. So. Sounds like we've got John dropping out now. Let's see if John's coming back. I can hear you, Krazy. Can you hear? Can, yeah, you, I hear you too. Have you got John at all? Or have you lost John? I don't know. John. <laughs> yeah, I think we lost John. It's okay. You and I are nice and clear. Let's see if we can get John back. Yeah, I'm just giving him a call again. Hey, I'm here. Yeah, so, yeah. So I, it's one all now. <laughs> so I had Cobra call me while I was trying to talk to you, and it, it for some reason uh, Messenger decided to drop our call and uh, uh, bring his call on. The, uh, oh, oh, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I, I was just, Krazy and I were just chatting. I asked Krazy um, if he was going to be pulling WAF and, uh, and, or, or, or just well. And, and I think, um, what are we, where, where do we go? Did, what, what was the answer again, Krazy? Uh, I don't know if I will be allowed to pull off because we're not, we're not in good <laughs> relation with our president now. Uh, uh, yeah, fair enough. And who and who is your president now? Is it still Hassan or is it somebody yes, else? Yes, yes. Hassan, okay. Yeah, that'd be good. Well, um, well, Krazy, I, I think um, we, we might we might leave leave it there. Uh, WAL four hundred six is only a couple of couple of weeks away now, and it's going to be an um, absolutely epic match. I think you and Dave Chafee will be the the match that everyone is looking for. So, um, best of luck for that match, and um, we will most certainly be watching. Thank you, Ryan. All right, Krazy, good luck to you. <laughs> Thank you. All, all the right. best, guys. All, all right, all the best. Care. Alrighty, uh, there we go, John. Crazy across the Dino of um, keeping his cards close to his chest for what he's going to actually try to implement against Dave Chafee. Well, that and he doesn't want to disrespect Dave. I, I, don't, I don't know if they've ever actually pulled, so um, yeah, no, I think he's just being a little bit careful. Um, yeah. He didn't sound like he was not, you know, he's obviously confident, but uh, Dave Chafee, like I said, he's, he's probably the strongest arm on the planet right now. As far as upper arm strength go, I know Pushkar's got that explosive hit and a big hand, but yeah, Krasi's going to have his hands full. But you know, if anybody can stop him, I think Krasi's the one to do it. Yeah, I think I, if, if it gets to that point where where Krasim is actually in a hook, I, I think that he'll he will be able to eventually pull through right. Dave, having put having put a bleed on him. But but yeah, like just that 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 initial angle, that forearm angle of of, of Dave, and all that side pressure, it's going to be hard to to get that supination set. Right. Yeah, no, yeah. no, I, no, I agree. I, I think I, if, I think if it stops, I think Krasny will will win. I think, uh, but it, that's mm. a big big 
tall order to stop Dave's initial hit. That yeah. like, he comes across so hard and so flat-handed that it's really difficult to even tr try to jam with a you know a, a typical cup. It's almost it's almost like you're being top roll, but he yeah. doesn't really attack your hand. He just sweeps you to the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I have to go. I'm going to stick with um with. To me, three 0 Dave Chappie. I want to see it go into a hook. I really, really do. I'd love to see maybe that third round Krazy gets that, that hook set. That that would be right. amazing, and it, and it goes on to be a war. But I, my gut feel is just three 0 Dave Chappie. Well, it depends on the mood of Dave too. If Dave's really feeling confident, he's up two zero. Maybe he'll uh, test the waters a little bit and, and, and make yeah. a match of it. Yeah, like, and that that could backfire tremendously yeah. too, as you said. It'd be it'd be, it'd be gassed and then. It goes on, but yeah. So, so what, what are you gonna call? You gonna call? You gonna call a round for Krazy, or um, we going all with Dave? I'll, I'll say, I say Dave wins the, the series, but I'll I'll give one match to Krazy. I think he's definitely capable. Um, mm -hmm. If anybody can do it, like I said, Krazy's gonna be the one that's gonna be able to do it. So. Alrighty, well that uh, concludes the WAL 406 prediction. It is going to be a huge card. Uh, this one is of course happening on September 5th, uh, which is only uh, what, a couple of weeks away now, John. So um, it's it's the final one of the year and um, it's going to be a big one. Yep, looking forward to it. I, we've got direct flights right, to Atlanta. Guys, I should get there, but we'll have... Oh. You're gonna go. You're gonna go, are you? I don't know. Like I said before, I really am enjoying this uh, BR Live on my my cell phone. It re they really do a nice show, and it's <laughs> it's all formatted and put together. It'd be like going to a football game. I mean, it'd be kind of cool to talk about going to a live football game, but I enjoy it sitting, yeah. <laughs> sitting in my living room. Yeah, there's something about that. I agree. Uh, awesome stuff. Well, anyway, John, thank you very much for joining us as always, and um, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. All right, Ryan. Talk to you next week. Yeah.